In this installment of our analysis of Super Mario RPG, we'll focus on how the game's level design impacts its progression system, namely, leveling up and becoming more powerful. If you haven't seen our two-part analysis on the game's level design, you can click the annotation here. I want to first touch on Stat Squish. There is a huge Stat Squish in Mario RPG, which is a direct consequence of the game's level design. Mario RPG has a level cap of 30, which differentiates it from most other RPGs, which typically use 99 or 100 as the cap. I believe this limit is a result of the relatively short length of the game. In my opinion, the short length of the game is simply a result of its content being all killer, no filler. Most dungeons are only a handful of screens, there's no overworld travel, and a relatively light-hearted story negates the need for lengthy dialogue or exposition. It would be impractical to use a cap of level 100, since every level up requires manual input from the player to select a stat bonus. The takeaway here is that the stat squish is probably a direct result of the very short length of the game. This brevity also affects your stats in other interesting ways. Consider that the max HP is only 255. This is just 30% of that in Chrono Trigger, and less than 3% of the HP limit in most Final Fantasy games. But you'll really only reach this number if you grind to level 30, which most people won't do. In fact, on a normal playthrough, you'll get to somewhere between level 17 and 22 when you beat the final boss. You'll also learn your most powerful magic spells at level 18, so there's even less incentive to grind past this point. But this actually makes perfect sense in the context of RPGs. For some simple math, let's round the levels of the average player experience to a nice even 20. Take note that you end up at roughly 66% of the level cap by the end of the game. In many other RPGs, you usually don't reach the level cap by the end. In my experience, you typically get around level 50 or 60. And if we go ahead and round this number out very roughly as we did above, we'll see that you're still about two-thirds of the way to the level cap. In both cases, there's still plenty of room for the natural variations in leveling due to player preference, but you'll need to grind up towards the level cap for extra challenging encounters, like the Culex fight we mentioned in our last installment. Again, due to the short length of the game, a cap of 30 is more than adequate. All this math, though, leads us to an interesting conclusion. Since Mario RPG's level cap is squished down to a third of a typical RPG, you might imagine that you actually gain three levels every time you level up. Of course, this is also based on an arbitrary level 100 cap, but this makes each level up more meaningful. Adding one level to all your characters can make an area immensely less challenging. You can imagine how the pacing of the game would break if the level cap were 100, and you gain levels three times as fast as you already do. So despite my natural aversion to such a low level cap, it actually just streamlines the player experience by squishing down the numbers. A more recent title, Pillars of Eternity, had a level cap of 12 on launch but it threw more skills and abilities in my face than I knew what to do with. Getting levels in that game makes even more of a difference. The stat squish in Mario RPG actually has its own consequences on gameplay. It draws the focus away from role-playing and more towards action platforming. The developers avoid drowning the player in all kinds of secondary stats and numbers that might overwhelm a first-time RPG player, but timed hits and platforming can be understood by the player regardless of their age. And since there is such a heavy focus on these elements, the target audience for the game is larger than most traditional RPGs. Of course, this stat squish down to 30 levels also makes it really, really easy to take advantage of certain exploits. If you get a game over, enemies are reset, but you still keep all the experience you've earned. Again, streamlining. In a 6-8 hour game, having to redo its stretch because you forgot to save might be maddening. Anyway, the exploit here is that in Land's End, you can use an invincibility star over and over to quickly reach the level cap. Once you use it, you can purposely die in battle to be returned to a save point right next to the star, which has respawned. You can do this in a few other areas of the game, including Mushroom Way near the very beginning, and the sunken ship roughly in the middle of the game. The fact that you always retain experience means that not a second of your time is wasted when playing this game. Having sometimes lost a half hour or more of progress in bigger titles like Final Fantasy X, this is a comforting thought for me. It's always important to have repercussions for failure in a game, or else you risk disengaging the player. But at the same time, it's good to soften that blow when you can to help the player's next try be more successful. The stat squish and length of the game also have another interesting effect. Items, weapons, and coins are thrown on you like candy from a piñata from start to finish. You'll constantly find flower tabs to increase your magic pool up to its cap of 99, and almost every town has a whole new set of equipment for all of your characters. There are tons of treasure boxes with coins and items, 40 more treasure boxes that are hidden, and even an infinite coin box near the end of the game to save you from grinding on enemies for money to prepare for the final gauntlet. Because you're always receiving some incremental upgrade, you actually feel like you're progressing all the time, which is a great psychological tool to make the player feel invested in the experience. The takeaway from all this is that Mario RPG does everything it can to keep you progressing no matter what. You have tons of ways to eliminate grinding, tackle bosses, and keep on moving forward. This is a game that respects your time, and it makes sure that the 10-15 to 15 hours you spend on a playthrough will be the most fun and action-packed hours they can be. Each area is so short that you're never bored of seeing the same scenery. On the contrary, 
it feels like it's all over too quickly. And I would give piles of money to the Kickstarter project that promises to build a time machine just so we can go back in time and give the Mario RPG development team 10 times the budget and time to work on this game. And that's it for level design and its effects on stats and progression. So if there's anything we left out that you think deserves mentioning, be sure to tell us in the comments. Thank you for your continued support of Game Soup. If you're interested in donating to the channel, check the description. We accept PayPal and Bitcoin, but a thumbs up or a comment is just as appreciated.